Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I want to dive into kind of a serious subject tonight and just sort of share my thoughts on something I feel can be applied to a lot of what we're seeing today. So here goes. Civilizations have an arc and a decay. They rise and they fall. We all know that. But thanks to our woefully inept education system, most people don't have a concrete historical perspective to give today's events necessary context. And tragically, even if we do have the context, humans don't ever seem to learn anything. We learn from history that we do not learn from history. Or we do learn, some of us do anyway, but the ones that do are laughed at and derided ridiculed as conspiracy theorists and nut jobs, all for pointing out things that are painfully obvious to anyone with half a brain. And that's a problem though too, because most of these gullible, naive little lemmings running around repeating what they hear on corporate news really do only have half a brain. But the people at the top, they're actually quite clever. They know what they're doing. None of this is an accident. Everything that's been happening for the past year, we're being steered intentionally down this course. And it's not necessary by any means. And even though the ones doing the steering are doing it on purpose, they're doing it for all the wrong, selfish reasons, with no thought to where we go from here. I'm not going to dive into conspiracy theories as much fun as they are. But this is how we end up in these tragically comical situations where the majority of the population is forced to shut down their businesses and stay at home and get injected and wear masks and lose all their savings and keep their kids home from school and watch their marriages dissolve and turn to drugs and alcohol and finally suicide just to cope with the maddening doldrums of non-being to which our collective existence has been relentlessly reduced. All while our overlords, like the Obamas, can throw lavish parties for their friends without a care in the world. Everything is flipped upside down. And the craziest part, the craziest part of all, the part that I just cannot wrap my head around, is that not only are we willingly going along with all of this, but there are actually people, millions of them, justifying and rationalizing all of this. Defending the Obamas and the Gavin Newsoms, the rich, powerful millionaire politicians, and attacking the mom and pops for trying to put food on their table. And not only defending these tyrants, but begging for more. Our culture has gone full-blown Stockholm Syndrome almost overnight. But I digress. The point of this is that civilizations have an arc. Anyone paying any attention at all has seen all of this before, and not just in 1984. The most dreadful governments in the history of the world, Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, Communist China, the Khmer Rouge, North Korea, they're all examples where an authoritarian government runs away with power, totally unchecked, and ends up as a tyrannical regime, murdering their own people. Pol Pot was an absolute madman, and his persecution of the Cambodians killed around two million people, nearly a quarter of the country's population. Hitler's government ended up killing over 10 million German people. Joseph Stalin had his own internal genocide and between forced labor, mass starvations, executions, and banishments to Siberia, he killed between 60 and 70 million Russian people. To say nothing of the Lodomer and the famines in Ukraine. For sheer brutality though, nothing holds a candle to the communist Chinese who have so far killed upwards of a hundred million people since Mao took over, from engineered famines to political executions. And it's still going on today with the cultural genocide against the people of Tibet. All of this is to say that people here in America should pay very close attention when the Department of Homeland Security comes out and declares that anyone opposed to lockdowns and restrictions are potentially domestic terrorists. That's over a hundred million Americans, a hundred million people that our own government considers to be enemies of the state. I've had discussions with people and they disagree and say, well, there's just too many of us and we're too well armed. A hundred million? 
The government can't come after all of us. Maybe they're right. I hope they're right. I hope we never find out. But as we've seen from history, wherever there's a tyrannical government, there is a way. I mean, even Zbigniew Brzezinski, the former U.S. National Security Advisor for Jimmy Carter, said, and I quote, and listen to this carefully. In early times, it was easier to control a million people than to physically kill one million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. These people aren't playing games. They're deadly serious. Our leaders look at us as totally expendable to fulfill their totalitarian goals, as despots always have. And despite that, despite everything we've seen this year, every disastrous blunder and misstep, people still believe the government is here to help. People have this idea that the government is this monolithic entity, all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful, like God. And that's the problem. People treat government like a god. And it absolutely is not and should not be treated that way. Although it's a good analogy because the government does want to be treated like a god. It wants to be all-powerful and to be worshipped and to have us make tributes and taxes and sacrifices in its honor and to have us follow its orders unquestioningly. But back to the point. There is no such thing as government. It isn't a real thing. If you go to Washington or Berlin or Beijing, you won't find anything that looks like a government. What you'll inevitably find are people. Of course, governments are made up of people, thousands of them making critical decisions about your life every day. And these people, fallible, petty, ambitious, corruptible people that they are, should never, ever be treated like gods. I've always said that anyone who wants to be a politician is the very last person who should be. George Washington didn't want to be a politician and was extremely reluctant to accept his role as the first president. In fact, while he was working on his farm in Mount Vernon, he's quoted as saying he had no wish which aspires beyond the humble and happy lot of living and dying a private citizen. Now that's the kind of leader you want. No good man desires power over his fellow man. Which takes me back to this civilizational arc. Civilizations decay. We've seen that time and again. Ancient Athens, one of the most prosperous, successful civilizations in the world, which gave us democracy and philosophy and shaped the Western world in so many ways that we can't even name them all, went through pretty much the same arc that we're going through right now. They suffered a cultural implosion. Their economy completely tanked. Their leaders were corrupt and wasted their money on frivolous projects or just flat out stole it. They sent their army off to fight wars in foreign countries they had no business fighting in the first place. They had a huge problem with immigration. Sound familiar? After that, the country just collapsed like a flan in a cupboard. Same thing roughly happened to Rome. Petty squabbling between the corrupt leaders, a decadent society, an impossibly divided government, bread and circuses, and the barbarians waltzed right through the gates. That's oversimplified, obviously. But the point is that all great empires are destroyed from within. This isn't revolutionary or new, but I think it's important to remind everyone what's coming. We are coasting on the tail end of the good times being led by weak men, one so weak he can't even string two coherent sentences together. And now we're heading into hard times. We could turn it around, we absolutely could, but history tells us that's extremely difficult. Thomas Jefferson said, I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. And isn't that where we're at today? Isn't that the principle behind the lockdowns and all the mandates we're seeing? Americans want the government to take care of them. We'll happily give up all our freedoms so long as the government takes care of us. Never mind the corrupt leadership, the wasteful spending, needless foreign wars, or out of control illegal immigration. Just give me my monthly stipend to stay home so I can watch Netflix. 
bread and circuses, the ark comes full circle. Our founding fathers knew all of this. They'd seen it firsthand with how Great Britain and King George demanded ultimate power over the colonies, and they tried to prepare us for that with our Constitution. After the Bible, the single greatest document ever written in human history. And if we listen to them and learn from history, because the lessons are right in front of us, we just might be able to save this republic and avoid ending up in the same graveyard as all those civilizations that fell before us.